Hello, sorry about that. Took a while to for me to log in here. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. So let's uh let's go through I wanted to ask, well, let me, let me share my screen with you here. Hopefully it'll give you more than just a blue screen, but uh, we'll see in a second. All right. Can you, uh, can you all see my screen here? Yes. Okay, good. Good. All right, let's, uh, let's look at the KF lab first. I want to see if anybody had any questions about the, the KF lab before we get started here. Any questions? I had asked about the post lab questions. How yes. important are those uh, going forward? Because they seem to be a lot of like, um, sort of like taking what you know and applying it to other scenarios. No, I wouldn't say that they're going to be that applicable to later work. No, uh, they are applicable to the lab you just did, but that's about it, really. Okay. And I, I just wanted to double check on finding the Van Hoff factor. Yes. Um, I know we really only use the two molecules, but it, like it seemed like in, in these, there was NaCl and then there was CaCl2, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, let me see. I just want to make sure I, I understand how to find it. I think it's pretty straightforward, but. Yeah, it's, it's really just a matter of, hang on, let me move this over the other side here. If I can, hang on, I'm just trying to move my, move this thing from where it is to somewhere else. There we go. Okay. So really it's just a matter of looking at the particle. So let's say you had ALCL3, for example, I draw a picture of that. You wouldn't have to know the charges, but if, if you did, it would be fine. And that would be four. So the I, I would be four, it's whatever it splits into. If you had CuCO3, that would be Cu and CO3, two minus and two plus, that would be, four, that would be two. See, the, the three there wouldn't matter because it's uh, part of the CO3, which is one, one grouping. If there's more than Okay, you, just, you might even have to draw it out if you're not 100% sure when you look at it. Oh, I would. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate. Yeah. Is that okay? I had a question about the lab final. Will it be similar to like the results part of the lab or the post lab part of the lab? I, I'd say, I'd say more, more like the, more like the results part of the lab, but a lot, you'll find a lot of post labs incorporate the results and what you did in the results in order to get there. So that's, there is a relationship there, but I would say it's more like the results than anything else. So if you have well set out calculations, as I've, you know, I've, I know I've been really incredibly picky with this lab book when people have submitted. I've given them multiple chances to resubmit as well, if, that, if that's been an issue. But I wanted to set the bar high so that they're all done the same way in the future. If, we use, if you gave us feedback when we got our lab book back, where mm -hmm. would that be right in the comments under the attempt or? It should be. Yeah. Um, if you, if you go in and, and look at the attempt, in fact, I think for the drop boxes, it, it even appears in your grade report. The, the feedback. Oh, okay. Okay. Am I, am I wrong about that? Can anybody confirm or deny where that feedback? Uh, appears? It does, yeah. Appear in the grade book. Yeah. So it appears in the grade book. The, the stuff about the, the stuff in the results though, the results quiz, you actually have, I think you have to go into the quiz to see that feedback, but you, you, you do that through, um, you do that through submission review and you can click on the quizzes and then you can click on that little black down arrow 
and it will get you there to take a look at the results feedback for, the, for this one here. Okay. All right. Any other any other questions about the KF lab? A lot of people have already submitted it. Uh, they seem to be okay with the the calculations. It's uh, it's not incredibly involved. Uh, does uh, does anybody need any any help with the calculations? This is what this uh, session's for. And then I was going to start on the the rate of reactions as well. Any any questions about the KF? All right, well, just for the benefit then of the people who are going to be watching later, I will go very quickly through the, through the calculations, make sure that people understand what they're doing. So the situation is that you've got uh, a water solution here after the ice has been removed that has NaCl in it. And that the mass of the H2O here is going to be the mass of the solution minus the mass of the salt. Now, uh, what can be confusing here is that the data and the data you'll be using will be the data in this file down here. You all can see my screen still, right? I just want to make sure I haven't messed up yes. anything. Good. We all see right. two screens. That's good. That's what I want you to see. So I'll have to open this again. It might be in Excel, but whatever, we'll see. There we go. See, what's confusing here a little bit is that we've got uh, 100.371, and that's in grams. And then the other thing is in grams as well, the sodium chloride. But the thing is we need the mass of the water in kilograms and what you would do is subtract those two and then convert whatever you get here into kilograms and of course we do that by doing times one kilogram over a thousand grams because I think in the actual results section or in your lab book even the results it, it asks for it in kilograms and that's how you can get it to kilograms all right, any questions about that? All right, once you get, once you get that, we, then we can find the molality. And the molality, molality is equal to moles of NaCl over the kilograms of solvent, which is water in this case which is going to be this result down here that we're getting. And the moles of NaCl we get from the mass of NaCl, we can convert that into moles using the molecular weight. Once we've gotten that far, then we can apply the formula here, delta T is equal to I Kf and m. The delta Tf is going to be a positive value. Some people have been submitting negative values for that. It's going to be a positive value, but it's going to be effectively zero minus minus 3.1 degrees Celsius. That's right. And so that's going to go in here. The I value, as we discussed earlier, is going to be two. That's for the Na plus and the Cl minus. And the M is the molality that we picked up previously. Molality. And then we can, we can solve for this Kf value. All right, so does anybody have any, any questions? That's just a very rough idea about how to do the calculations for that. Okay. Uh, 
So all the lab data is in that file for all the different labs. Okay, so what I'll do is we'll talk about the rates of chemical reactions. What I'll do is I'll go over the pre-lab for this one. I won't try and give too much away, but I'll, I'll try and give you a little bit of, bit of an idea about how to do some of the stuff here. So some of the answers here, you might be able to get by looking at some of the videos that I have for the calculations as well. But just very briefly, it's here asking for the, the moles of acetone. I, I'll find the, the moles of, uh, of HCl just for, just for kicks here. And you'll see what it says is the, I've even got a hint here, moles of A is equal to molarity of A times the volume of A in litres. And that's kind of important as well. So let's say we were looking for the molarity of the, sorry, the number of moles of HCl. It would be the molarity of HCl, which is going to be 1.0 moles per litre. So you know that if you have big M, that's the same as moles per litre times, and the volume of that is 10.0 mils. But we need to convert that into litres. So that's how you would do that. If you're looking for moles of HCl, this here is asking for moles of acetone. So you'll have to figure out how to do that with the moles of acetone. Does anybody have any questions? So the, uh, re the next one, a reaction solution is made up of that ma many mils of blah, 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 many mils of blah, 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 all right. So what's the molarity of acetone in the reaction mixture? You see, the thing is with this question, it's not 4.0 molar anymore. Because once you've put it into the reaction mixture, it's now diluted with all of those different things that have been put in there. And if you look at the total volume, you'll see it goes 10, 10, 10, and 20. So it's a total of 50 mils now, where it was 10. So it is going to be diluted relative to what it was previously. So what you can do is you can apply what we did in question one and get the moles, and then divide that by the total reaction volume in liters. Does anybody need any other guidance than that? Any questions? Okay, uh, question three, a solution is made up of all of those things. The, the observed, observed the purple color takes 230 seconds to disappear. So what you're doing in this reaction is you're reacting all these different things together, the acetone, the HCl and the I2. And the I2, as you can see, is there's very little of it. So it gets all used up. And the I2 is actually purple or, or brown or yellow or something and it becomes colorless when it's gone. So that's what's happening in the reaction. So the rate, the rate that it disappears in is going to be equal to the concentration of I2 uh, in, and divide that by 230 seconds, but it's the concentration of I2 in the reaction mixture. I'll tell you, it's not this. That's not the concentration of I2. What you'll have to do is figure out how many moles of I2 there are based on what you've got here, and then divide that by the, uh, the volume of the reaction mixture, which is 50 mils, and convert that to liters. And then you can divide that by 230, and that will give you the, that'll give you the rate you're looking for. You'll notice the rate will be molar per second because you're dividing a concentration by a, by a volume, sorry, by, a, by seconds, by time. Does anybody have any questions? So you're all fine with number three, hey? All right. So to reiterate for number three, we're finding the molarity first of I2 and then dividing that by the time that we have. That's right. Yeah, so that's why the unit ends up being molar per second. So it's a molarity divided by time. The thing though is it's the molarity of the I2 in the solution, not the initial I2 molarity. You with me? Yeah. Yes. So that's why we have to go through that same process as we went through in question one and two. Okay. 
Now question four, this is kind of similar to what you'll actually be doing in the lab uh, because you'll have three things there and a, and a rate for each of those. And this is how you're actually going to determine the orders. So if you were with me in the, the first video, uh, first, sorry, the first session where we went through the question one in the class, uh, we're taking a similar approach. It's not actually not that, not that hard here, but if we're looking for, let's say we're looking for M, then what we're going to do is use two, where the M molarities are different, but the other things are the same. So if I wanted to find M here, which I don't, I don't know what it's going to turn out to be yet, I would use reactions four and reaction one. So I'll do that here, and this is to find M. And I'll do reaction four over reaction one. Is so that I'll... because B and C are both the same? In yeah. Reactions four and one, so they cancel and leave A? That's exactly right. That's okay. exactly right. And the reason I did four over one is because the, the rate here is bigger. And so it's going to end up as a nicer result. See, it's 2.0 times 10 to the negative four versus 1.0 times 10 to the negative four. Right. Mm -hmm. So the, the way that this looks when we do it, so we've got the, so it's based on the rate equation, of course, which is going to be rate equals K A to the M, uh, B to the N, uh, C to the P. So we'll do the rates over here. So it'd be 2.0 times 10 to the negative four. And you know, quite conveniently, you see it's not going to be a difficult thing to solve. That's molar per second. So those are going to cancel the units anyway. The Ks are going to cancel as well. And we'll be left with 2.0 2 to the M and 1.0 to the M down here. And everything else, uh, as you, yeah, just as you pointed out, it's going to be the same. Oops. And you see the reason that that's important is that those can cancel then and we don't have to worry about them. So that cancels, that cancels, that cancels, that cancels. And all we're left with is this. So two will equal two to be two to be M and that will allow us to solve for M as being one. So I'd, I'd want you to, to do similar things for the other trials to see if you can find those. You'll have to figure out which ones you're going to work with in order to do that. Does anybody have any questions? You're all okay. You're all hunky dory, huh? All right. So uh, let's, uh, let's just briefly, go over some of the things, some of the resources that we have here. Let's the preview here. So what I would do is I would watch this rate of reactions lab video. Now I know it's a lot of work for this lab. There's a lot of calculations, there's a lot of work, but here's what I want you to remember. It's two, it's a two day lab. It's a two day lab. So there's going to be more data than it would be in a one day lab. So just keep that in mind. Also the video is going to be longer as well. So keep that in mind too. But I would watch that video so you can get an idea of exactly what you're doing. I think it's important. I think the video is important. I think a lot of people are not going to watch the video. I think they're going to just try and do it without watching the video, which I think is like cutting a tree, cutting down a tree without turning on the chainsaw. But you know, that's just what I think. And then down here, the calculations for the results are actually in these different videos here. Calculations for part A, part B, part C. And those are, those are pretty good. I mean, they, they go through, I've already had a couple of people submit these. They seem to, to find these to be okay. And I've also got a video here about getting a slope off a graph in Microsoft Excel. 
So that'll be useful to you as well. All right, does anybody have any, any questions so far? I have a question, but it's about submitting like the lab books for each lab. Okay. Um, do we have to submit a table of contents with each no. submission? No, no, I, I'm, I'm fine with if you don't do that. I'm fine. I, I'm going to take your word for it. If you've, if you said you've got a table of contents, I'll, I'll take your word for it. If you don't have one, well, you're only hurting yourself, I think, because it makes it harder for you to find the stuff in your lab book. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other, any other questions? Anything about this, this lab here, the, uh, the rates of reactions lab? I haven't really gotten into the lab. That's why I don't have a ton of questions. Oh, no, no, it's, it's fine. But I, I really, the purpose of today was just to introduce you to the different resources that you could, that you could attack this with. Well, my question would be, um, does this lab go beyond the scope of what we've been doing in the lecture? And if so, how? That would be helpful. Not really. I mean, we are doing stuff in this lab, like finding orders, which is what we did in the lecture. We're finding K, which is what we did in the lecture. We are doing in part C, we're finding the activation energy, which specifically we don't have any questions for on the test, but there, are, there is a fun quiz about it and there, there are notes about it in the PowerPoint. Okay. But uh, that's, that's really it as far as what might go beyond the lecture, but it really technically doesn't because, you know, we have notes about it in the lecture as well. So I think, let, let me think when this is due. So we're effectively doing the lab on Thursday because you know, Monday and Tuesday was, uh, was holiday type situation. So we're effectively starting the lab on Thursday. It goes through, we're still doing it on Tuesday and it wouldn't be due till the following Tuesday. So uh, what's going to, well, be the Monday actually, the, pre, the next Monday. So next, next week in the Zoom session, I'll pretty much be just focusing on this lab. So hopefully people have had a chance then to, to look at it. I understand that nobody's looked at it now and that's fine. That's not a problem. I just, today I was just, just wanted to, to introduce it to you then more than anything else. And you'll have plenty of questions for me next Tuesday during the lab session, the Zoom session. Does anybody have any questions so far? But in between this lab, um, we also have like another pre-lab due, correct? Of the determination of equation constant? That would be, well, that wouldn't be due till next Wednesday. Okay. I think. Yeah, I think Wednesday is the next one. Wednesday of next week, not this week. All right. So the pre-lab for this lab is due on Wednesday. And it looks like I didn't remember, didn't realize this. There's, there's actually a, a, a video for that, for the pre-lab here. I just went through it. But anyway, I didn't have to. It's right there. Ah, I'd forgotten I did it. But anyway, you can watch that too. It's a bit of pre-lab. All right, any, anything else? I'll go, I promise you I'll go over this in as much detail as you want next, next Tuesday because, uh, you know, we'll, everybody would have, will have hopefully looked at the lab and they'll have plenty of, plenty of stuff to ask me about. Watch the lab video. That's pretty much all the advice I have for you right now. Any questions? Anything about the lab anybody wants to ask in general? All right, if, if nobody has anything else, then we'll leave it there. If you have anything specific, you can always email me and uh, we'll talk about it. Any questions, anything else? All right, well, thanks all. Thanks for coming. I'll see you, you. Uh, see you next week. All right. All right. Bye for now.